Hi everyone, this is Mr. Herps, and this is the endosymbiosis theory in plain English. Now endosymbiosis is a very big word, so let's break it down. Endo comes from the Latin word which means in. That is the exact opposite of the Latin word exo, which means out. Now believe it or not, you actually use these words on a daily basis. The word exit comes from the Latin word exo, which means out. And the word enter comes from the Latin word endo, which means in. You may have also heard in science these things called exoskeletons. That means the skeleton is on the outside of the organism, such as in an ant or a crab, where we have this thick outer hard shell that forms a skeleton on the outside of the organism's body. That is the opposite of what we find in a human being, where we have a skeleton on the inside of our bodies. It's called an endoskeleton. The skeleton is on the inside. The word symbiosis is a little bit more complicated. That means that things live closely together. You may have seen an example of symbiosis in the movie Finding Nemo, where we had a clownfish that lived inside of a sea anemone. So the clownfish would swim around, and he would get cleaned off by the sea anemone, and so the anemone would actually get a little bit of a meal, and the clownfish would get a little of a bath. It was a healthy symbiotic relationship. Also, you may know that you have some bacteria that lives in your gut, particularly E. coli. These E. coli lives in your large intestine, and that sounds like a bad thing, but believe it or not, it's actually a very beneficial thing. You give the E. coli a nice, healthy, warm, humid, comfortable place to live, and you get vitamin K out of that relationship. The E. coli is able to break down things in your food that you eat that you cannot, and giving you vitamin K. So you put those words together and you get the, wor the word endosymbiosis. That means that things living close together on the inside. Now what does it actually mean? Here I have an example. This is Big Fat Tony. He is a big cell. About the only thing that he's good at is being big. His cons though, that he's slow and he's tired all the time. He has a couple of friends. Little John and Little Jim. Little John, he's very good at being energetic. His pros our energy. Little Jim, his pros are that he's able to make his own food from the sun. Both of these guys are very small, very weak, and they're very fragile. So Big Fat Tony's a big tough dude. His two friends, very small and weak little guys. Every time that these guys reproduce, they make an exact copy of themselves. So every time Big Fat Tony reproduces, he's going to make another big copy of himself. They're just going to be big, and they're going to be tired, and they're going to be slow and unhappy. Little John, he's able to make little guys of himself that are fragile, weak, but they're very energetic. Little Jim, he's able to, he's able to reproduce cells that can use energy from the sun, but again, they're also very fragile. So... Little Big Fat Tony came up with an idea one day. He said, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. I'm a big tough dude, and I got a lot of uh, outer shell, and I'm, I'm strong, and I'm tough. Hey, why don't you, Little John and Little Jim, live inside of me? And maybe we could live as a healthy family relationship. Thus is the birth of the endosymbiosis theory. Little John and Little Jim lived inside of Big Fat Tony. Little John gave Big Fat Tony energy, and Little Jim gave Big Fat Tony some food from the sun, and Big Fat Tony gave both of these guys a nice place to live. So as a team, they were big, they made their own food, and they were energetic. They were actually so good at doing those things that they became bored. So... Big Fat Tony found other Big Fat Tonys that had their own Little Jim and Little Johns, and they lived as a clump. They became friendly relationship. They became multicellular. Instead of just one cell floating around, they became many cells floating around. And eventually, so many cells came together and formed very complicated organisms that we find, such as a plant or an animal. Now, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up the truck, man. Where's the evidence for that kind of thing? Well, hey, the evidence is in the deoxyribonucleic acid. That is a long scientific word for the, for the word DNA. Every living thing on earth has DNA. A tree has DNA. A bacteria has DNA. A dog has DNA. And you and me, a human being, we have DNA. 
So Big Fat Tony had his DNA, Little John had his DNA, and Little Jim had his own DNA. So wouldn't it make sense that if Big Fat Tony absorbed these two guys, that you would, have, you would find some leftover DNA inside of Big Fat Tony? Why, yes you would. In fact, Big Fat Tony had Little Jim and Little John living inside of him, and these guys had their own DNA left over from when Big Fat, John, uh, Big Fat Tony absorbed them. So from then on, every, when Big Fat Tony absorbed them, every time that he reproduced, he actually reproduced his own little, uh, his own little John and his own little Jim. So little Jim and little John were reproduced every time Big Fat Tony reproduced. Thus, a little bit of DNA left over from little John and little Jim was inside of these organelles or these little organs that did things for Big Fat Tony. Little John was able to make uh, energy, and Little Jim was able to make food. So every time the Big Fat Tony reproduced, a little bit of the DNA that was able to make food and a little bit of the DNA that was able to make energy was also reproduced every time Big Fat Tony made a copy of himself. So that is the endosymbiosis theory in plain English. Again, this is Mr. Herbst, and I'm signing off, folks. Have a good day.